this page. Hello everyone! My name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss and I am swatching the brand new Ohuhu brush markers. I'm on BR3 Rose Beige. Surprise Rose didn't put her head up to see why I was saying her name. <laughs> and I'm having so much fun learning about these new, more cost-effective brush tip markers that Ohuhu has put out for us. Now, there are links in the video description that can take you to go see these Amazon Ohuhu markers. Now, as of today, they are not available over on Amazon, unfortunately. I think they're available in Canada, but not available here in the US but you can go put them in your cart and kind of wait until they come back available or keep an eye on them. So make sure you keep an eye on them if you are interested in them. What's exciting about these markers is the brush tip. If you're familiar with alcohol markers at all, you know that the standard for alcohol markers in this world is a Copic marker and they have this beautiful brush tip that illustrators and artists love because you can get this great flick that makes it easy to blend and do all kinds of neat effects. So when Ohuhu decided to come out with their brush tip markers, we were all excited. We're very familiar with the standard Ohuhu alcohol markers because they are a great um, marker that you can pick up for a good price, much cheaper than a Copic marker, but they don't have a brush tip. And those of us who color with alcohol markers really miss that brush tip. In fact, I miss it so much that these Ohuhu markers went on my shelf and they don't get used very often. I kind of bring them out when my nieces and nephews come around and I don't use them other than that because I miss that brush tip. So when I heard they were coming out with the brush tip, I was really interested. So as soon as I could, I put my order in and I got them finally. And that's why we're taking this time to do some swatching and some comparison comparison comparing <laughs> now the first hour of this video was done over on Facebook my husband's phone is ringing he's gonna turn it off sorry about that <laughs> the first hour of this was done over on Facebook and we did some really good comparing of the tips to the Copic sketch and what I found out is that the tip is just a little bit longer and shaped just a little differently and we were curious could we put the same tip that is in the Copic sketch into this marker and guess what we found out in fact I'm going to show you right now we found out something very interesting about this brush tip I'm going to show it to you right here here is the brush tip and what I did is I pulled it out because I wanted to see what it looked like when I pulled it out and I discovered something I probably am not the first one to discover this, but I kind of feel like I am. So I'm going to show everyone my discovery. Are you ready, Steve, to see my discovery? Let's pull this out, get a little inky again, and pull it out and see and show everybody. Look, it's a double-ended nib. Is that not exciting if you know anything about coloring with brush tip markers sometimes these cheaper markers the nibs will wear out really fast and so what this does for us is if this tip this end right here starts to wear out you can yank out your nib flip it around and shove it back in and you've got a fresh nib and you're good to go again so if you still got ink in your marker you just flip that nib around and away you go again if that nib starts wearing out so thank you Ohuhu for coming up with a design that will hopefully make these markers last just a little bit longer. And now I have more ink all over my hands and that's okay. So that's the first really cool thing that I'm excited about. Other than that, the nib seems to be performing really nice. It's a little less um, grippy on the paper than a Copic sketch nib. At least that's my impression. We also had my husband do a smell test and it is a little bit stinkier than a Copic marker, but not as stinky as a Sharpie marker. So if smell is an issue for you, which I know some of you it is, um, I'm very smell sensitive because I have chronic headaches. So that is an issue and that's why I have my husband do a smell test. So that's how it 
lands on the smellometer. <laughs> so that's the kind of things we're learning so far. I have other things to share with you and we're swatching the colors right now so that we can see how we feel about the colors. Um, do we have a good selection of colors in this set of 48 or not? That's the things we need to talk about. Now also I wanted to talk to Steve about our awesome book a day giveaway. How's it going? It's going good. We've given away a lot of books already. Yeah. And we still have yeah. the rest of July. So what do they need to do to enter the yep. Book a Day giveaway? <clears throat> There's a link in this video description. You just click on it and go enter. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So go enter. You only need to enter once and then you are entered for the whole month and you have a chance to win a book this month. Yep. So make sure you go follow that link and enter for your chance to win. We also have a five-day free coloring boost. Did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would like to boost your coloring, we have five days to boost your coloring that's going on right now. And you just need to follow that link and it's free and you get um, a tip every day, tip yeah. slash tutorial every day to help boost your coloring. So we've got lots of fun things going on for you here in Coloring Bliss Land. Yep. So make sure you hit subscribe and like and follow us for all the fun. So anything else I missed? I feel like there's more. Oh, we have a new Amazon. Oh yeah, our Amazon um, store. An Amazon store. So what we're doing is building this storefront where I'm kind of filling it with all of my favorite things that I use here in the art studio to color with. So. There's often products that everybody asks me about. Where did you get that? What's that white pen that you're using all the yeah. time? Or that Bessie the vacuum that you use in your <laughs> studio to clean up the, the dust? What? Where did you get that? So we're going to fill up our store with all those items that you guys are always asking us about. And so you can go follow that storefront. I didn't know you can follow stores like that. Yeah. Yep. And it's a basically it's Amazon.com slash shop slash coloring bliss yeah so but there's a link and you can just follow that too so so come on over follow it if you do purchase anything using those links it gives us a little kickback but it's no extra cost to you so it helps us out and keeps our business going so anytime you use those links thank you very much for helping our little business so yep. all right let's get back to oh woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my Remember my little niece, you yeah, would say, oh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> okay, I think the ink has dried on my fingers so that we can continue to swatch. In the case, it came with a, like a blotting page, this little plastic sheet that's all warped and stuff, and I'm trying to use it. I'm wondering if I hit it with my heat gun gently, if it would unfold. <laughs> <laughs> because it's really quite a pain. It's not behaving. Um, what you're supposed to do, it says on the blotting page, you're supposed to put it under your, your paper so that if the ink bleeds through as you're working, this um, card will catch that bleed through and um, prevent any messing up of the page underneath. That's why it's there. But it's causing my handwriting to look really bad because it's so boingy boingy. So I, I've done my best to use it. I'm not enjoying it, so I'm going to take it out and put it to the side and put my own blotting page in there instead. And now I don't have to worry about it and it's going to be a much better experience for me. So we're following the same, this um, swatch chart that also came with the markers. And I am doing my own swatch chart here on my paper. This is a swatch book you can pick up from coloringbliss.com. And it's an awesome swatching book. It gives you space to make notes. Like over here I wrote, two sides to the brush tip. The cap stack, they're about 73 cents per marker. Now that's the current price as of right now. That's what I paid for them. They're not available on Amazon right now. They are available in Canada, but not here in the US right now. I even wrote down the smell, what we said about the smell <laughs> on here. So um, I love our swatch books because they have a place for you to write all these kinds of notes down in them. 
So I'm going to keep swatching. I know we have more questions from everyone about these markers. So if you want to ask your questions, you can. There is one issue I have with these markers so far that I haven't shared even over on Facebook. And that's the end caps. Um, some of them, the writing on them are already rubbing off. This is a good example. When I swatched terracotta, I saw it came up. And this is not the only one that's having this problem. There's quite a few of them in my bag over here that have this problem, that the print is already rubbing off. And it kind of worries me that they're going to rub off even more just with common use. The reason this worries me is because um, I really rely on the names to help me know I've got the right marker to the right color. And I often have both, I'll have all the caps off and I've got four markers going because I'm doing a four color blend. And it's really important to get the right marker cap back on the right body. And so that's really important. And if, you know, there's no name on the body, that's the other problem with these markers. The only names are on the caps. So if I have both caps off and I've got two markers going, or if I only have one cap off and the name has fully rubbed off, then I'm gonna hopefully be able to get the colors matched back up. Anyway, I know that I'm being nitpicky here, but maybe not because <laughs> this is the name and it's kind of important to get the right cap back on the right marker. So that's one problem I've had. Now again, we need to set our expectations correctly. This is a budget friendly set of markers. They're only 73 cents per marker versus Copics, which come in at a good deal around 450 per marker. Um, I think this set I have here of Copic sketches were 430 per marker. That's a pretty good deal. So that's a huge price difference, 73 cents versus $4.33. So we have to set our expectations correctly. Somewhere they had to, you know, cut corners a little bit. So maybe that's one of the places <clears throat> they cut corners, right? We got to kind of give them a little leeway here. <laughs> so... I yeah. understand. Jackie that. mentioned <laughs> Sharpies, you know, using a Sharpie to write the number. Um, James good and idea. Elaine both mentioned using clear nail polish on the end. Oh, to that's seal a it really in. good idea. Yeah. And I could use, I've got these paint pens. And one of the reasons I bought these paint pens was for labeling um, art supplies that come in without names. So I guess I could write why are five on the body. Yeah. And then I'll be able to match the right caps up with the body in case, because if you guys have ever watched me color, caps go everywhere and <laughs> I've got four markers going at once. So this is a real legit issue for me. <laughs> so I might, if I end up using these a lot, which I hope I, I'll be able to put them to a really good test, it might be worth taking an hour or two and labeling things really, really well. So I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Okay. Do you want to <clears throat> comment maybe on this page here? Okay. Yeah. So here is where we we're having a kind of a flick fest. Is that what we should call this page? <laughs> yeah. This was the flick fest. I even had Steve get in on the flicking. These were Steve's flicks and these were my flicks. Aren't Steve's flicks amazing? <laughs> <laughs> so what we did here was basically compare. The purple flicks are Ohuhu and the blue flicks are um, Copic Sketch. And what I wanted to feel was the difference between a marker that is $4.33 and a marker that is 73 cents because what we are excited about here is the brush tip that's why i bothered with buying this set otherwise i wouldn't have bought it i already have ohuhu markers i don't need more ohuhu markers what i need was brush tips <laughs> <laughs> so um what i felt as i I flicked away is that the sketch marker has a little bit more friction a little bit more drag so whatever it's made of is uh, um, dragging just a little bit more on this paper now this is our beautiful marker paper very very smooth I'm giving these markers every benefit uh, possible here so um, whether that's a benefit or not, it's kind of personal preference. Um, some people like a really springy brush tip. Other people like one that has more give. It's personal preference. 
we'll only know over time how well this brush tip is going to um, behave. Like I said, I have a set of Blick Illustrator markers that I really worked hard to see how long that tip is going to last. Kind of planning on doing the same thing with the Who Who's. I'm going to really put them to the test and see how long will that tip last. But we have the added benefit that if that tip starts to crush or collapse, I can flip it around. It's got that second end, which is so exciting to me that we can do that. We can flip it around and keep going. So that's really cool. Jack just donated to our channel, by the way. Jack, thank you so much. He's helping pay back. Or maybe he helped pay to replace the <laughs> the nib we destroyed on the poor little, I we had to, we, we kind of destroyed this nib when we were comparing nibs but that we're not going to talk about poor blue <laughs> maybe that jack's donation can replace my nib so the other thing we discovered was the chisel tip on the ohuhu is a lot wider than the chisel tip on the sketch just in case you're curious and it feels a little bit mushier so i don't know if it's going to last as long or not i don't know Time will only tell. Jackie would like to see a blend with maybe three colors. That's a great idea. The same family and compare, you know, call picks to. Okay. Um, okay, we'll do that. Um, I'm trying to think which ones we have most similar. I think we can do that. I think we've got, I've got some um, Copic Chows that we could probably find some similar ish over here. So we'll do that. Chows have exactly the same nibs as the Copic Sketch, in case you didn't know. Copic Sketch and Copic Chows, the only difference between these two markers is the um, body shape, um, so that this marker here holds more ink and this marker holds less ink, but the nibs are exactly the same and they use the same inks. These ones come with more colors. You can get more colors in this body shape, but these have um, a cheaper price. So if you want to get into Copics and uh, you can't afford these Copic sketches, Copic chows are a really great place to start. I think when I'm ready to go into Copics, I'll probably start in the chow land first, and then I'll probably move into sketch. <laughs> That's my plan. So that's what we'll do after. I'm going to swatch just a few more because I'm having fun swatching. And then I, I think you're right. I think we need to do a blend test and see how they do. Michelle's also wondering if you can flip the other end over to the tip. Oh, the chisel, the tip. chisel tip. Do you mm -hmm. want to check for us while I swatch another one? Here, check um, terracotta and see if... Except you want me to be the one that gets icky. I'll do it. Let's check the chisel tip. Okay, I'm gonna be so inky you, tonight. You sure you don't want this? Use a tissue. <laughs> it doesn't look good. It just yeah, soaks it straight through. That's okay. where you fold it over a few times. Oh wow, that's really in there. Oh, okay. Nope, the chisel tip is single sided. I'll put it out here so you can see it. That is what a chisel tip, when you pull it out, that's how long it is and what it looks like. I'm sorry, but doesn't it look like I've pulled someone's tooth? <laughs> it's so disgusting. <laughs> that's what the hole looks like right there. <laughs> it's so disgusting. Okay. I'm all right. I'm all right. We're going to slide it back in now. Uh, I usually, when I put these back in, I usually try to line it up. And usually if I refill these in any way, it is the chisel tip that I pull out, not the delicate brush tip. Um, just FYI. So when I refill like the, um, like these ones, I will pull out the chisel tip. Because they're usually a more rigid, made of something a little bit more rigid. Okay. Yeah, we are officially really good and yucky. Okay, I'm going to wipe some of this off so I can get going right away. Polly asks, can you swap the old marker set with the new if the tips go bad? Are the colors the same? I wonder Okay. which one is she talking about? Polly, which, uh, I'm, which brand are you talking about? I'm guessing she's talking about... Um, okay. If she's talking about the old Ohuhus versus the new Ohuhus, from what I understand, these are a new color creature altogether. So if you have old Ohuhus, 
you can see these are a totally new body and a totally new color system. So this is all new. <laughs> Um, some of the, I watched on, like I said, only, I only watched one and a half reviews and both people were a little bit frustrated that they didn't stick with the same color system. Like this doesn't, um, add to or relate to in any way their old color system. This is all brand new. So, um, yeah. Now my oh oh hoo's are one of the older sets of oh hoo's from what I understand as well. So I don't think you can take the nibs out of this and put them into here. I think these are totally different. Yeah, that's a really small chisel compared to their new chisel. See? Very different. So yeah, it's totally a new creature. They've gone with either a new manufacturer and they doing new inks. That's what I'm guessing. They've got a new manufacturer, which makes sense. So, um, but uh, you can see if you look at the old Ohuhus that some of the same issues were here as well. The print wasn't that great on the end caps. They're having the same problems over here as they were on um, their new markers here. But again, we're talking budget friendly markers here. So there has to be some areas that are lower quality than what we would like. By the way, Jackie and Amy recommend just going for the sketches rather than chows. Oh just, yeah. Because over time, you know. I'll probably end up in the sketches anyway. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. probably very true. Okay, we finished rose beige, and the next one is coral pink. I think I've done both of those. Maybe you should just do a couple more, and then... Yeah, let's finish out this row. I kind of want to make get all the ones that may be similar to what I have here swatched. These are the ones that I do have that I think we might be able to find some similar, so I can get a feel for the blendingness, blendiness. So let's swatch, um, actually we probably have already swatched those, but let's finish this row. I, I need to finish the row. So coral pink is R1, right? Where's R1? R1, right here. Okay, so in case you didn't see over on Facebook, this is what the marker looks like. It's round, but it has the little nubbins so that the marker won't roll away. And the caps do stack, which you guys know, I love a cap that stacks. So that's great. And that's what the brush tip looks like right there. Okay, so let's write down R1 Coral. Oh, it's so much easier to write without that card underneath it. Pink. Okay. And we'll do our flick. That's the flick you get with it. Okay, and we'll do one more. Uh, the next one is R2 Vermilion. Polly would like to see a comparison between oh -hoo, oh -hoo, hoo and Blick. Okay. And I'd like to bring up the Studio um, 71s. That's the one I'm curious about because that's more in the same price range. So I'm gonna bring up my Studio 71s. I wanna do a field test between the Studio 71 brush tip and these brush tips. That's the one I'm really curious about. R2 Vermilion. Vermilion, is it one L or two? Tiny writing, Vermilion. Okay, and here comes the flick. Sure makes a pretty flick. Like I said, it's a bit mushier of a nib. Okay, that's a pretty color. Ooh, pretty. Okay, I'm gonna tuck this in here so I don't lose it. Okay, so if we're going to try to find, a, we're gonna do a three color blend, is that what we wanna do? I'm thinking we're gonna be able to find a salmon pink Here's Copic, yeah, Salmon Pink, and that one. This is um, E11, Barely Beige. So let's grab YR4, these two. The caps seem pretty true to color so far. That's pretty good, look at that. 
I'm impressed. Let's look at R2. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That doesn't happen very often. BR1. That one's decent. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Oh, hoo hoo. Okay. Then if we do, um, that's really light. We don't have anything like that. And so you don't have master markers, right? Nope. I wonder if potato brown is. Yeah, Potato Brown and this one are probably our closest match. Jackie's wondering if you wouldn't mind showing the tip again. Okay. Potato Brown. Here I thought Potato Brown was our ugly color, remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're going to be using Potato Brown. Um, okay, Potato Brown and Salmon Pink. These two, right? I think so. And if we want to go for a third color, let's see if copper, that's really red compared to raw umber. Um, I also have burnt sienna in, let's see if burnt, no, that's even redder. Do we have anything if we go redder? Vermilion, no, it just goes cherrier, not brown. Hmm. So far we have these two colors. I was hoping I had a raw umber color, but I don't. So maybe we'll do a two color blend? Yeah. Or can you go lighter? I don't have a lighter. Salmon mm. pink is the lightest, then we go to a yellow place. Mm. That's going to be a problem with doing skin tones. I just thought of that. When you do a skin tone, you've got to have that one last yeah. really light color because this set doesn't come with um, a colorless blender. So that's a problem. Hmm. Oh well. Um, just saying because that's not a light color for a skin yeah. tone okay um we could go we could just go raw umber yeah and then um i'll have to use this one here which is okay 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 we got a plan let me tell you what the plan is and i'll show the tips again put these away oh thank you polly she just donated <laughs> she says thank you for all the information joy and laughter you both bring us <laughs> you're so sweet polly thank you Okay, let's move this swatch book back, and that back, and that back, and I'll show you what we got. Okay, these are the three colors we're going to use with um, Copics. We've got E11. Can they see that? Yeah. And then we'll go to this color which is E15. Sharon is a, a rookie in the colored pencil world, I think to the coloring world. And she says, I had no idea that this world of markers existed. Oh. I'm just discovering colored pencil world. <laughs> oh, there's so many fun things. Oh my goodness, E18. Okay, so that's the trio we're going to try with. Um, this is Copic. That's the Copic Trio that we're going to attempt. And then the trio we're going to attempt with Chow, no, oh hoo hoo, is um, YR4. Hey, that's not a four, that's a four. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to Potato Brown, BR, two and then uh oh was this the next one i can't did i do it wrong nope i did it right then we'll go to br1 and i did uh, i'm just having issues <laughs> this should be a b not an r b okay and then this is the oh hoo hoo matchup oh 
<laughs> We're having issues. <laughs> okay, so that's light, medium, and dark. Light, medium, and dark. Okay, that's the matchup. I feel like we need some, like, a ding, ding, ding for the, <laughs> the matchup. That's right. Okay, first thing I want to show is the difference in the tips. So remember, the tips on the Copic Chow are the same as the tips on the Copic Sketches. Okay, so here is a Copic, a Copic brush tip versus the new Ohuhu brush tip versus, let's grab, this is, someone wanted to see, this is a Blick Studio, which is my favorite dupe for the Copics is the studio Blick studio markers so here are the three side by side and i'll hold them up and you can see the overall shape differences i'm fan of whiting yeah, it's interesting isn't it yep there they are i'll move them a little bit in the light and then i'm going to go this way so you can see because they are a little different looking straight down you can see that the ohuhu which is right here is a little bigger and that's the one when we pulled it out earlier it's pointy on both ends so if we wear this one out you can pull it out flip it around and shove it back in and you get another point fresh and ready to go emma happens to have these same colors so she's going to color along with you good she does have a question do you prefer copic sketch or copic chow Okay, they're exactly the same, like I said, except that these are less expensive. There's fewer colors in the chow line, and it holds less ink inside a chow body. So um, I prefer the price of the chows. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've always thought that I would collect the chows first, but everybody's telling me I should just go straight for the, <laughs> for the others. So Jackie asked, are they like the Kuretake brush markers? I don't think you have any of those, do you? I have, I have one set. I don't know which ones. The Fudun Suzuki's, the Fudun Fudun But I think those are water-based, not alcohol. So no, they are not like those. If we're talking about the same ones, okay. So let's um, go Ohuhu first. Ohuhu or Copic? Let's do go go Copic. Okay. So typically, when I do a blend with um, markers there's a couple different ways you can do um the i'll do it my favorite way first and that's basically jennifer's rule of blending thirds same rule that i teach you guys for um color pencils so though that person who's here that's just learning about color pencils um also if you're here just learning about color pencils you should join our five day color boost there's a link <laughs> <laughs> and that will help you learn my five um really five great coloring tips so yeah do the color boost okay <laughs> margo had actually recommended that oh good so oh you her. guys are all ahead of me oh, I'm, I'm slow okay so this trick this blending trick works with lots of different coloring mediums not just markers here so follow the jennifer's rule of blending thirds okay so let's say we're coloring um an area that's like a rectangle okay so um, usually what I'll do is fill the whole area with the lightest color first. Now there's lots of different ways to color. This is not the only way, okay, you guys? <laughs> this is kind of like a full, full, foolproof, a foolproof way to get a good, beautiful blend, okay? And we are on paper. Remember the trick to any really good coloring is to pair the right tool with the right paper so i'm on marker paper this is really thick dense paper and it's smooth that's the the winning combination for my type of coloring okay next layer is the mid-tone and i'm going to start over here and come about two-thirds in and i'm going to start with the flick of course you can't flick a color pencil it's a little different with color pencils okay we got our flick Okay, and then start again over here. Remember when you touch a marker down, the first touch down is the most ink. And that's why I'm starting over here because this is my dark end. Then about a third of the way in here, we've got our flick. Whoa, that's really dark, Jennifer. You've got some work to do. 
Yeah, that's quite a difference between the dark and the mid tones. Yeah, isn't it? and this is the problem with having a small selection of colors. But we're gonna have the same problem down here, so we'll see how we can do here. Now, back to the mid tone. And we're going over all these layers. This is where Jennifer's rule of blending thirds helps. Because going over those two layers now starts to bring it together. See? The alcohol soaks into those fibers. They mix together. We're working wet on wet kind of um, mix here. And then back to your light again. And I'm going to start over here now and flick into it. And just kind of work it till I feel like it's smooth. You can come over here too if you want. Flick and flick until you feel like you've got your blend. You can even go back if you feel like you've lost your darkest area, which sometimes you do. And clean it up. Add a little more dark to give that, um, what's the word? Contrast. Okay. So I feel pretty good about that blend. Um, it's a little bit, maybe, maybe a mid-tone again. And this is, this is why you want a paper that has a lot of density to it. Because the fibers have room to soak up the ink. I'm going to flip it over and show you just how much um, soaking in it did. Oh, that's looking pretty. Think of um, skin tone. Think of um, fur. That would be really a pretty blend. Okay, flip it over and you can see how we've fully saturated the paper right here. That's, I don't think that paper could take any more right there. But we could have kept on blending here. There was room for more work here. So again, this is why you want to put something below your work when you're doing alcohol marker work, even on thick, dense paper, because it's just going to soak straight through. So there's our Copic blend. Let's see if we can recreate it now with, oh, who we should be able to um, with Jennifer's rule of blending thirds we should be able to okay so I'm gonna try to create uh, roughly the same size um, rectangle here okay that's pretty good okay this is gonna be really good for me to feel now going right from the Copics to the Ohus. Right away, these don't feel as juicy. Okay, now we'll go to the mid-tone. Potato brown! Oh, that's quite a jump in tone. We got some work to do, you guys. Have you ever heard of the Aspire Color alcohol markers? I have. In fact, if you turn around, Steve, they're right there. Oh. Oh. That's right. Now I remember. <laughs> okay. Oh, we got some work to do, people. <laughs> Sometimes you pick up three colors and they're just the right three. There's, um, they just go together like peanut butter and jelly. There's no hard work <laughs> at all. And then sometimes you pick up three and you're like, oh, we got work to do. Back to the mid-tone now. Blending, blending, blending. See? Jennifer's rule of blending thirds. Polly asked if the watercolor paper would accept alcohol markers. It does. Um, watercolor paper, though, remember, has texture. So you've got to be careful which watercolor papers you use with your alcohol markers. Um, because some texture on watercolor paper is really aggressive and it can hurt the nibs. These um, tips on our markers are precious. We want to make them last as long as the ink in the marker is there, right? So you want to be careful with that. Um, our watercolor paper, the texture is pretty um, mellow. So I think it's going to be okay. Okay, now we've got it here where it's sort of pooling I've, let's go, is this BR1? I don't want to use the darkest. Let's go to the mid-tone and see if I can get it to feel more. I'm trying to get it that harsh line to go away. It's like it's saturated right there and it's not blending. It's kind of odd. I don't know. 
see that line? Can you see the line? Oh, it's not as evident on the screen as it is in person. I'll flip it over and we'll see what's happened. It's happening here too. That's really interesting. I think it's because these are um, putting a lot of ink down the second you hit it. You're getting a bloop of ink. Let me show you. If we do the darkest one, BR1, and do a flick test, and then do our darkest one, E18, and do a flick test here. Okay. And let's see, as it dries down, we'll come back and look and see if there's a harsh line from the two. If that will explain it. Okay, flip it over and you can see again, this is super, super saturated, but so is this side. And that's a little surprising to me. So my guess is what's happening is um, that first touch down onto the paper, we're getting more marker ink laid down and then you get your normal flick. That's how these tips are behaving. A big pool and then your flick. And that's why we're getting, see up here, we didn't get that same saturation because all we did was one, well, two layers here. Yeah. And um, so that's a different, that's that tip is just acting different. We're getting a big bloop and then your flick. Hmm. So if we look here at our two flick tests, this is oh hoo hoo. This is Copic. Um, I'm trying to see if you can tell the difference. This seems more of a consistent drag of ink, where this one seems like you get kind of a pooling and then a drag of ink. Can so close, that's what's happening. You get this pool of ink right here and then your flick, where this is more of a, a more consistent. It's kind of a consistent flow or something. Huh? Yeah. And I think it's just the difference in the tip. So it's just something to be aware of. It can actually work to your benefit. When you're getting that um, gradient that you want, you just remember that, that with your oh hoo hoos you're going to get a nice big pool of ink and then your flick and just work with it. Uh, Helene asked, how are Copics for grayscale coloring? Oh, they would be great. Um, so alcohol markers in general are very translucent. Is that what we decided? Which word? Transparent or translucent? <laughs> are a very translucent art media, right? So if you have um, some black lines laid down. So let's say this is your cute little um, drawing, your grayscale drawing and you want to color over it with any alcohol markers. Um, the great thing about alcohol markers is they're very translucent. So you can lay your color on and all that gray scale is going to show up through it. So it's a really perfect medium for gray scale. Melinda asked, how does the sizing on watercolor paper affect alcohol markers? It's going to do the same thing as it does with water. It's going to kind of stay on the top and not do this quite so fast, the soaking in and saturating into the fibers. So um, I've played with it when we first were testing our watercolor paper. I wanted to make sure, you know, if I could recommend um, alcohol markers onto our watercolor paper and it worked beautifully. The blends were super easy. Again, the only concern I have is will that texture on the paper um, hurt our nibs. That's my only fear. I don't think it will because it's not exactly a rough texture. It's just sort of a texture. It's a different kind of texture versus if you've ever felt an Arches watercolor paper, Arches has more of a gritty texture on it. It's the only way I can explain it. What you need to do, <laughs> highly recommend you go to any art store, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Dick Blick, Jerry's Artorama, any local art store and go feel watercolor paper. Not just the inexpensive like Canson water paper, but go and feel Arches watercolor paper. Feel a cotton watercolor paper, feel hot press, feel cold press, feel them all, educate yourself, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. Some have this gritty texture that if you touched these expensive or nice 
nice delicate brush tips too it would totally rip and tear at these nibs and oh my word they're expensive to replace and you know it's not a bad idea so that's why I'm concerned about it and why I'm always like no you want smooth nice paper for these markers that's where they shine the marker nibs just glide and they do beautiful blends and they do amazing things but if you get on anything with a tooth or a grit to it they kind of go eh, 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 and you're like oh no my poor precious nibs and yeah so go to the art store and feel those papers and give yourself a bit of an education on watercolor paper barbara says love your show learning lots oh good <laughs> um emma says i have something i personally noticed my copic brush nibs have bent and gone out of shape okay um they could be are they a little low on ink um the worst thing you can do to a copic marker is let our any um, alcohol marker even the water based marker is to let the ink get low as soon as it starts to get low stop using it and buy your refill um, because the the marker nibs are meant to perform well when they are nice and juicy as soon as they start getting low they start to collapse that's the same case with these other markers that I wanted to bring up Ugh. these are some I wanted to compare she rarely uses them and she uses marker paper but yeah it's weird yeah i don't know um i don't know it'd be interesting to see them i think it was this one okay that's one i wanted to show you guys okay these are studio 71 i believe they are available on amazon but i think they're cheaper through i can't remember the website consumer crafts like that. I think it's the website. They might be cheaper there. We have um, on our website for free the Studio 71 marker color chart. And it has all the colors that are available and any that have an asterisk on this chart don't come in the full set. They have like a big full kit and then you can buy the individuals to fill out your entire set. People ask me that all the time. Which ones do I need to finish my full set? This chart tells you that. You can print it off and it will show you which ones will come in the full kit and then the asterisks, asterisk. asterisks shows <laughs> you which ones you need to purchase individually to finish out your set, okay? So that chart is online. These are the Studio 71 markers right here. I'm gonna show you the yellow one. It has a chisel tip and it's nice wide. We're gonna compare it here in just a second to oh hoo hoo and then it has a brush tip and this one ta-da has a little bit of desalinization so i promised we would talk about desalinization inside the inks um they are using a bit of some kind of saltiness for the the ink <laughs> um not all the colors use it this one i found definitely see the guck I have a video where I overreact to some markers that I found that has this guck on it. It was really bad on those markers. I'm not going to say the brand. You can go watch that mark that video and see me overreact. What it is is it's a desalinization. It's not mold. There's nothing really weird or bad about this except for the fact that it's yucky. And all you need to do is wipe it off and you can keep on trucking with this marker. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, yeah, so there, now that marker is good to go again. So what I'd like to do is compare because I think these are a cheaper alternative, um, even cheaper than my Blick Studios. So I want to see if they feel similar to the oh hoo hoos So let's feel, here's oh hoo hoo here is, oh. These are much more rigid. Now, I have colored with these. These have less ink in them, so it's not very fair. These are older. I wish I had a brand new one, because see how much less ink there is here. And can you see how this is starting to collapse? Can you see the collapsing? That's a sign that the ink is getting low, and that's what happens when you let the ink get low. It just starts to collapse like that. 
Oh, now I have an ugly finger now. What I do for you guys. My hands are just trashed. <laughs> so, um, are you looking up how much these are? Mm -mm. Would you mind checking to see how much the Studio 71 markers are? Um, so these ones I know for sure because I've colored with them. They're decent. Um, you can replace them per marker. Um, so if you do use up one, you can replace it. Open stock is what it's called when you can buy one marker at a time. So you can buy them open stock. You can't buy the Ohuhu's open stock. So if you wear out one and it's your beloved one, the only way to get it replaced is to buy a full set all over again to get that one back again. Um, the Studio 71s, they do collapse when they get dry like that. But... Um, they, they tend to color pretty good. I enjoyed coloring with them. So for a while, they were my marker to recommend to you guys as a good alternative. But I still prefer these guys as far as they have refills. You can buy them open stock. Um, they just seem to be a better... I like referring you guys to this brand because it's a really good Copic dupe. The brush tips last a long time. All of that. They don't they don't even seem to collapse as they get dry. Where these ones do collapse and go kind of mushy when they get dry. So I don't know if these are worth it. Did you find them? I'm curious to see per marker how much these guys cost. So anyway, that's desalinization and that's Studio 71. Oh, Steve's got them here now. Let's see how much they are. Studio 71. I'm going to write this down. Is 48 the largest set they have? Um, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think there's a total of 70. Oh, maybe there's a... They should have done 71. Yeah. Let's see, I did that wrong. I want to do that way. There, that's better. These are all the colors it comes in. I was really excited about these when they first came out. Wow, the prices are all over the place. They look yeah. like they're about a dollar a marker, though. You can't find the larger set, either. It's like the highest I can find is 48, at least right now on, on Amazon. On Amazon. It looked to me Let's like see. the cheapest they were coming out at about a dollar a marker. So they're still more expensive than the Ohuhus. He's checking consumer crafts now, which is where you can get them individually as well. So he'll see how much they are on consumer crafts. I think that's where I bought them was consumer crafts. I'd like to try another three color blend with the Ohuhus and see if we have that same effect. So let's try, um, there's a lot of greens. It looks like, look at that, a full row of greens, almost a full row. Well, if you include the turquoise, we've got, oh, they've just gone to town with greens. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes these sets, like, they just really overkill on one color. If you count GY... That's really weird. I only find 48 on their site, too. I wonder if they've... if they're not selling the larger sets anymore, if they're out or something. The highest I can find is 48. And how much is it? Um, $47. Yeah, so about a dollar marker. Okay, good to know. Okay, so if you look at there, we've got this whole row plus those are all green. So they've gone heavy, heavy on the green and just like a few yellows. Yeah, they really were heavy on greens. If you like green, you're going to love the Ohuhu brush tips because <laughs> we've got greens We've got options in the Greenland. We can do trees and grass till the cows come home. Isn't that the saying? Trees and grass till the cows come home. These are all in the green family. 
Look at Miss that. Miss Tennessee likes turquoise, green, and purple. Oh, you're going to like the greens. <laughs> so let's do a green combo. Um, I'm thinking emerald is G1. So let's do this one as our dark. And let's do that as our light and that as our medium. We'll see without really making a plan. Let's see how these three go together, shall we? We've got, this is G1. Looks like that, our dark. And we've got G2. Oh, this one's got more of a yellow undertone. And then we've got this one. Those two are going to go together. Beautiful. I think this is going to make a good blend. G8. Whoa, that's a stinky one. Woo! Whoa! Oh my word. Is it just me or is that one more smelly than, than the last one you smelled? Ooh, yeah, that's strong. Ooh, the greens are stinky. They stinketh. <laughs> okay, let's try. Start with the lightest one. And let's go right here. Okay. Let's see if we have that same problem with um, the oversaturating the paper in those one areas. Okay, there's the light. And now we'll go medium on the blick studio markers you can buy those all in one set right you yes. can get like every color in one set yes okay okay there's medium and here comes dark i'm slowly um collecting all the refills but they're actually having trouble keeping the refills in stock, so I must not be the only person <laughs> collecting the refills of the Blick Studio markers. Okay, there's back to the medium. And now back to the light. I do enjoy the juiciness of a new marker. That's a beautiful blend. Look at that. Okay, let's flip it over. That one I did better, but very saturated on one end, which is to be expected with Jennifer's rule of blending thirds, because we go over that a lot. And that end we did better. But that's a beautiful blend. So they blend beautifully. Yeah, I know. Um, I think Jackie had mentioned earlier too. She was glad to see that they didn't like desaturate each other. Yeah. Also, like they. I've had some markers where even Copics. I've had them where when you do Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds, which is a lot of layering, you start to see speckles, weird speckles come up through it, and I think it's like the alcohol interacting mm -hmm. and doing weird things. Maybe so. what you should do is grab some greens in the Blick Studios and hurry and do a three-tone blend there. Okay. And then the Studio 71s or something. Okay. Here is my Blick Studio swatches. So we'll try to find something similar to these three. Um, I wish Blick Studio would come out with more colors. Um, let's do apple green. G8 is 44. Yeah, it looks like you're going to have to go more of a yellow green, aren't you? Yeah, and we'll go for the mid-tone. What do you think, Steve? Well, it makes me wonder if you're just going to have to go yellow green. To go that way? We'll just go that way. Yeah. We'll go 48 to 84. 48 to 84. Well, Dawn just donated. She says, thank you once more for a wonderful show. Oh, thank you for your donation. You guys sure are supportive of us. Okay. So this was Ohuhu. Okay. 
Okay, and now we'll do Blick. I'll write down the colors for Blick. This is 84. And 48. Do you want to do a smell test for us? <laughs> I was hoping you would ask. Oh, that color is very similar. I don't know if we're going to get a good... Eh, it's starting to... As it dries, it's getting lighter. It's kind of weird. The Blicks have a pretty good smell. I mean, they're oh. kind of strong. Look, that one needs a refill. We'll make it work. They're kind of strong, but they're not as repulsive. Oh, it's a different smell. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, my paper's starting to get full. We we'll have to go this direction. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's the wrong color. Start with light, Jennifer. Is this one of the colors I have a refill for and it's on order? I wonder if we have this refill. I need to check now. 44, do I own this refill? No. Nope. We either need to order it or it's on order and I don't have it yet. 44. The light colors tend to be the ones that everybody orders more of, I think. Okay, here's our mid-tone. We've got work to do. <laughs> okay. And then this is our dark tone. Okay. Mid-tone. Oh dear. And then our light tone. Come on, little light tone. You've got enough ink in you. There. Pretty good. A little heavy right there. <laughs> okay. There's our Blick Blend. Okay. Look at how colorful our paper is. Oh, happy. What did you think coloring back to back with those? Um, the apple green, because it was so low, felt very low. Um, these definitely feel more like a Copic. The feel, the drag. These still feel, but these are so juicy, and but they feel softer. So I'm really worried about them giving up. But we'll see. I, the only way to find out is going to be to color and then, like, you know, purposefully push them and see what they do. Almost abuse them, you know, <laughs> and see if I push and color really hard with them, what, what are they going to do? So, you wanted me to do Studio 71? Is that what you said, Steve? Yeah. Okay, I got a few markers away here. We're starting to get a little bit out of control. Why don't you bring up um, BG8 and um, BG7 and BG8, BG7. I'm worried BG4 is going to be too. How about instead of BG7, let's do BG12. BG8, BG12, and BG4. Okay. BG, BG, BG. January just donated. Oh, thank you. January Rivers. That's a new name, I think, to me. Okay. B, let's see, we gotta write them in the right order so I can remember. This is BG8. Let's see if there's desalinization here. That's BG8. And then we're going to go to BG12. Let's see. Well, that was a stinky one. The Studio 71 cell refills? I don't think so. Just, just open, open stock. stock. Yeah. And then BG4. You know, I'm pretty impressed. 
like I said, these have sat maybe for a year without being touched. And look how good they're doing. Luminari is wondering, what's a good pack of six Copic Sketch to buy after buying skin tones? I don't know. I bought the 12. Um, I put the 12 that I bought in our new Amazon um, storefront. So if you want to see what I ended up buying, I had the six skin tone Copic Chows, and then I bought the 12 set of Copic Sketch is the next Copic purchase I made. <laughs> so you can go see which ones I bought because um, I couldn't decide. All right, here we go. Now this one does have desalinization on it, this BG4. So I'm gonna wipe it off. Saligubs um, says the, oh, the Ohuhu brush does collapse over time. I've had a couple that don't resemble a brush anymore. Have you tried flipping it around? Did that solve the problem? Did you know that it does that? I don't know if she came in late or not, but the Ohu brush tip we discovered has two ends to it. So you can yank it out and flip it around and shove it back in and you'll have a fresh nib. So I'm curious to see if you've tried that and um, how that's going for you. So my other question for you, <laughs> I have so many questions. We have someone who's actually used them. My other question, who was this that has experience with them? What? Uh, I don't know how to say it right. Sally Gubbs. Sally Gubbs. <laughs> um, were, did you run out of ink before the nib collapsed? That's my other question. That's always my, you know, if you ran out of ink and then the, it collapsed, it's all good. So, <clears throat> Have you ever, I don't remember, have you done a video on refilling a marker? Um, no, I mean, I've talked about it from time to time. I think I showed how to refill my, uh, during a live event, I think I refilled uh, one of these, my Blick oh, Studios. Oh, Studio, yeah. Um, so I could show you how I do it if we wanted to. Um, I could just grab one and show you how it's done. It's not that hard. I was scared to do it the first time, and I have overfilled it. This one is also, no, that's not desalinization. That's just a little bit of fraying on the end. Oh, that's a lot of fraying. That's a collapsing nib. Can you see how, what it does? Yeah, you can see it kind of spreads out. Yeah, that's a collapsing mm -hmm. nib. And that's sad because there's a lot of ink in there. So that makes me sad. That's when I'm feeling like I got gypped. To me, the nib should last as long as the ink. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. And if it does that, then I'm good. Of course, I can move to the chisel tip and use the chisel tip. So, Jennifer, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I bought these markers for the brush tip. Just saying. Oh. Sally Gubb says it still has ink. I still use the chisel nib. Okay. And now, Sally, my next question is, have you flipped that nib? Because <laughs> I was so excited when we discovered that. And this one is acting weird in multiple ways. Yeah, I'm starting to be a less and less fan of the Studio 71s. Oh, this is a sad little nib. Yeah, it's really collapsed, isn't it? Yeah. Loretta asked if you know if Ohuhu has a hand color chart available. I don't know. Um, but buy one of our <laughs> swatch books. <laughs> and this oh, is like, oh, sorry. This is like impossible. The ink has gone weird in one of them. I'm not sure which. So it's like a soupy, sticky mess. Something weird has gone on here. So yeah, this is a fail. That was Studio 71. And I'm going to put a sad face. Sad. <laughs> that was sad. Okay. So I think I'm going to have to start not recommending Studio 71. Just because it didn't last. It could be and... that they're old. So it could be that they're old. But I've had my Blix just as long as the Studio 71s. And the formula inside those have lasted. 
and the nibs last longer, but they're more expensive. Um, so you got to balance that. And I've had other markers longer. So yeah, you got to balance these things, you know. Um, you get what you pay for kind of thing, right? You get what you pay for. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if I could recommend these. Maybe if you use your markers really fast and you like a chisel nib so you'd be okay that if your brush tip kind of failed you could swap over to your chisel nib and you'd be okay with that. Then I would say okay go for the Studio 71. But the whole point of buying the Studio 71 is we're excited because it had the brush tip. So if you're buying these markers because you want a brush tip then I don't know if I would recommend these. I think I would steer you towards the Blick. I can't recommend these wholeheartedly yet until I have fully, fully tested these guys right here. We got to put these through their big paces. Um, yeah. Well, it has, has been interesting to see over a year, over two years, what happens. With what them. happens with the inks? That's really interesting to me. Yeah, I'm curious now too. Uh, will you do a blend, another blend for me with the Copic? I mean, sorry, the uh, Prismacolor. Yeah. Uh, I need more paper. <laughs> I think it's official. We need another piece of paper because the Prismacolors maybe are two years old. Those could be two years old. Jackie asked, have you checked the other side of the nib of the Studio 71, just in case there's a surprise? Let me check. Well, let's see. What kind of surprise? I'm scared now. <laughs> okay. So that's um, BG12. And it's coloring really good. Do you so like classic Copics? Do you have any... Classic Copics are the square ones, right? Kind of squarish. I, think so. um, I don't know. I wouldn't buy them. Um, every artist I follow, like serious artist, they buy either the Sketch or the Chow. That's what they buy. And I believe they come in fewer colors than the Sketch. So if you're after a ton of colors, and you, then you want... Well, that's interesting. Saligab says, I can't flip the nib because the other side does not fit through the hole. Oh, no, because it's so poofy and frayed. Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah. So we need to remember that. If you notice your new Oh Hoo Hoo brush tip starting to collapse, before it gets too bad, hurry and flip your nib. That's good knowledge. Sorry. So on your other ones, if you've got any that are starting to collapse on you, Sally, what what's her name? <laughs> Sally Gubbs. You should probably go through them all. And if you've got any that are starting to collapse, hurry and flip those ones. So you get the most life. See, the chisel end are working beautifully on all three of those. So I could still color with these. The Studio 70 ones that were acting weird. The chisel side is beautiful and working perfect. So that's good to know. Okay, Steve wants me to blend with my old um, Prismacolors. Like I said, I've had these for a long time and it's been a while since I've opened them. So Did you check the tips, nibs on those? Yeah, I just said the oh, chisels sorry, are working it. beautiful. No, no, no. Did you see if you could flip it? Oh, that is that what they meant? Yeah. <laughs> I thought they wanted me to test the chisels. <laughs> no. Melinda says they're not flippable, but I guess we'll see. Okay. <clears throat> nope, they're not flippable. They look like this. Like Copic. Yeah, they're similar to the Copic. They're odd shaped and so nope, can't flip them. Daryl asked, um, how do you feel about Sharpies and Bic markers compared to these? Sharpies and Bics have a really rigid bullet type nib and they are awesome for what they do um they i color with them a lot i've got a whole collection of them right there i have i even have a playlist for you here on youtube of how to get the most out of your copics no your sharpies and your bigs um they're great um they're an alcohol marker they're very stinky um so be aware of that if you're a smell 
is really sensitive. Um, if you're going to get serious into alcohol markers, though, you're going to want a different tip, a different nib so that you can get better strokes, better blends, because um, those nibs can only take you so far. But yeah, they're great fun for tiny details, and you can do a lot with them. I proved that on that playlist. So go watch that playlist, mm -hmm. and you'll see all that you can do with those markers. There's and your five day coloring boost. That's oh, day yeah. two, isn't it? I think it's on. <clears throat> is it day two? I think so. Painting day with two sharpies. is painting with sharpies for the five day coloring boost. So, yeah, people really rag on sharpies. You know, oh, you know, it's not a professional tool and stuff. But I mean, alcohol markers, the ink in them are not like light fast. They're not going to like stand the test of time and uh, 200 years from now, you're going to be like, oh, look at this beautiful thing made with Copic or Prismacol. No, they're all going to fade and just like the Sharpie marker will fade. So it's really just that tip that is bad. And they're really stinky. That's the other thing that everybody complains about. So yeah, so there's nothing wrong with a Sharpie marker. So let's blend. I've got three here, and let's see if there's any desalinization and how the tips are holding up. These are very expensive little beauties. Um, I think I put a link in our, in our um, uh, thingy for this exact set that I bought. It came with 48 in a really nice wallet and everything. Oh, in our shop. In our, our shop. shop. Yeah. yeah, so let's see if any of these. These, <sighs> the caps on these are so frustrating. Okay, this is what the brush tip looks like on these. Um, these are so, have always been some of the most juicy markers. And then they have a bullet nib. So that's different. The other ones have all been brush tip on one side, chisel tip on the other. But these are so hard to get off. They almost hurt. They've kind of got a sharp tip right here. And if you've got any pain in your hands like I do, then you're going to hate these. <laughs> so I usually keep in my wallet with these a balloon um, because that will give you the grip you need to get them on and off without hurting yourself. So a little heads up. So I just want to check real quick to look for any desalinization and I don't see any in the greens. Let's check a brown, no desalinization. Uh, let's check a blue, no desalinization. One more, black is notorious for desalinizing on the Copics. No desalinization. Well done, Prismacolor. So do you prefer Bic, Bic or Sharpies? Uh, I don't have a preference. I have both. Okay. Let's go for it. We've got, oh, stupid. I'm just going to take the caps off. <laughs> okay. Here we go. The dark I chose today is PB13. 13. Let's get this balloon out of here. And we've got the mid-tone is PB165. Teresa oh. says, uh, such a smart cookie you are about the uh, how to keeping that balloon around. Uh -huh. She <coughs> says she hates opening those. Oh, it and hurts. The bird says, thanks for the balloon hand. Yeah, balloons are great. PB167. 167. Okay. Now, that's a very different green, but... It is what we have for greens. So we'll see if Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds can bring three very great, three green, very different greens together. Again, we'll do a rectangle. Okay, so Prismacolor, pre, oh, these are Prismacolor Premier brush tip markers, dual ended brush tip markers. Their brush tip is a very different creature from all other brush tips. They're very flexible, flexible, I'm getting tired. Very flexible and sort of grippy on the paper. I'm gonna have Steve try one so he can tell you guys his feelings compared to the other markers. They're very grippy and very flexible, but not mushy. They're just flexy. 
I like the feel of these. Mm -hmm. It's all about personal preference. That's why some people invest in one set of markers over another. And price. Because <laughs> these are very expensive. That's why I've never bought more, although I love them. Okay, mid-tone. Darkest tone. And these are still just as juicy. These, I mean... I mean, you've had those for a couple, a couple years. years, maybe three years. Prismacolor knows how to make a tool. Of not water soluble pencils, though. Yeah. <laughs> <Blech>. <laughs> That's the, probably the only tool I've ever bought of Prismacolors that I've been like, you failed. <laughs> Sparkle Wing says, ever since I first tried them, I've liked the Prismacolor brush markers even better than the Copics. Mm -hmm. Um. Jackie just asked how there. the Prisma tips compare to the Ohuhus. That's what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, they're very flexy. And I'll Mary show you. asked, do they match the pencil colors? No, um, I don't think they have the same. They're not like the same world of colors. Um, Somebody thought they might, that. though. I guess we could compare, huh? Um, I'll have Steve look for grass green. Or any three of these. I've got apple green, grass green, and dark green. Okay, I will show you. Oh, man. The caps, though. Can you not improve? Okay. Let me show you how flexible if I can. Can you see that? Okay. Look how flexible that tip is. That's not a good angle. We can do better. Let's try this camera. Oh, that's better angle. Okay, look how flexible this nib is. Look at that. That is amazing. I mean, look at that flex in that nib. It's amazing to me. That is a nib. This is why I have such strong opinions <laughs> about nibs. <laughs> but... Yeah, I think I'm going to need You've more You've had then. several comments on your nails. Oh, thank you. They're going to be thrashed. My hands are thrashed after this. But you pay for these. I mean, you pay for these markers. So they better be good. <laughs> and I don't think they have refills. You can buy them up open stock. So, um, yeah. I've wondered, though, if you could find dupe so, colors um, for them. Yeah, the numbers don't seem to match the pencils. I wonder if the names do. Grass green, apple green, oh, maybe. dark green. Um, we could also check any of our yellows, if we have any of those handy. I think these are grass green. Oh, hand me your grass green. Um, what was I saying? Um, what I was saying was, they better be really good for the price on these. Okay, this is the grass green. Steve found us grass green PC 901. I'm going to really lean in. We'll get a nice burnished and we'll go light too. So this is PC 909 grass green. Okay, and then this is grass green here. Pretty good. Look at that. Maybe they do People match. People have said that they've been able to match them up. That they do ah. match. Uh, let's see. So Mystic that's... Sparkle Wing says the Prismacolor markers do have colors that match the pencils, but the markers come in 50 more colors Whoa. that don't have pencil equivalents. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Those are very similar. We'll see how it dries. Um, Alcohol markers look very different wet than they do dry. That's one of the things you have to learn as you're coloring with alcohol well, dang markers. It. See, now they've triggered my FSS. Now I want to get you all of the Prismacolor. Well, just go look at the price. Then your FSS will go. Because <laughs> it's so. It's only 285 a marker. Uh, uh, but the full set, like. 
It's so expensive. <laughs> I have looked, honey. I was like, I'm going to buy these because they're so amazing. But you can't do refills. And what I was going to say is I always wondered about getting a Copic dupe refill for them because I like the bodies. I like the nib. I love having the brush tip and the bullet nib instead of a chisel. Chisels, I'm like, blah. I love a bullet nib and I love the this combination for coloring because you can do your teeny teeny details. You can do your big swipes of color and your blends. This is a winning combination. If they could get their caps working better, that would be awesome. Got to get their caps working better. Okay, someone really trying to get a hold of you? Um, only $725 <laughs> for the 200 count. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. FSS just went down the drain. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, <laughs> they are very expensive. Yeah. So what? that's why I bought the 48 count. And what I did was I bought the 48 wallet, and then you buy the colorless blender one colorless blender and it fits in the middle of the wallet so you can and so in the middle of the wallet you got the 24 count oh yeah is that what i have i'm looking at your pencils up or oh markers. so i have the 24 not so the 48, 48 count with case is 106 dollars. okay yeah so i have the 24 with the case wow. and then i bought one open stock blender and you put a balloon in the middle of the, the, the wallet and zip it up and you can carry that around. And it's a great little set. You'll feel really spoiled. The colors are beautiful. You can get really great blends. It's a really good starter set. And if you're like me, you'll never be able to justify buying anymore. <laughs> you just can't justify it. So you just buy the cheaper sets to fill out what you need. It's kind of like my same concept with gel pens. You buy one great big set, like a gel writer or something like that, one really big set, and then you buy the specialty gel pens that make you excited and to kind of fill out that one big set. It's kind of the same thing. Buy a good basic cheaper big set and then buy a few of these specialized markers to make you feel special. <laughs> So I think my voice is about shot. So I think that means it's time to stop. We didn't get everything swatched. So my plan is I'm going to finish swatching probably tomorrow morning. And what I'll do is I'll take a picture and upload it in Instagram. So follow me over on Instagram. And I'll also upload it on our Facebook page, which most of you are already following me on uh, Facebook. But if you don't, some of you don't like Facebook, so you can follow me on Instagram as well. I'll post the finished swatches with my finished thoughts on the colors. I can already tell you, I think they have too many greens, um, that there probably should be more balance in colors, but I'll give those final thoughts when I do that. So um, watch for that post. I also have another video coming up to continue our celebrating of World Watercolor where I give you one of my most favorite hints that I ever learned from one of my other YouTuber friends on um, a watercolor hint that I'm not going to share because you have to wait for that YouTube video to come. So make sure you've hit subscribed and you hit that little bell so you are notified when that video comes out. We have lots more world watercolor fun coming including those beautiful Paul Rubin metallic paints that I will be swatching and showing off to you. So lots of fun coming out. So make sure you're also entered for the book a day giveaway celebration for world watercolor month and we have the boost your coloring skills which is a five day free um, program that we're running so if you want to boost your coloring skills get in on that and have fun boosting your coloring skills with me we kind of cover a little bit of everything to help lift your coloring skills and get you excited about coloring so follow that as well and we started our Amazon storefront where I'm filling it up with my favorite things. I'm not going to fill it up with all of everything I have. Just my, I'm cherry picking my favorite things and the things you guys ask us about the most and putting that into our Amazon storefront. That's a great way to support us if you want to find another way to support us and you're going to be buying these things anyway. 
go check it out over in our storefront. Um, it all costs the same to you. It just gives Steve and I and Coloring Bliss a little kickback. So just so you know how those affiliate links work. Same cost to you, a little kickback to us. So it's a great way to help us out. So I want to say a special thank you to all those of you who financially supported us today during the live event. It really does help our channel. And if you can't financially support us, those little likes that you give us and the comments below and anytime you share our videos, all those things really do help us. So thank you for supporting our channel. We sure appreciate it and have so much fun hanging out with you guys. I hope you had fun learning about the Ohuhus. Hopefully they'll be back in stock soon. So if you want to buy them, you can. And I'm looking forward to finishing swatching them because I love to swatch. It gives me so much joy. We learned so much that I think the best thing we learned today was how the nib flips around. That was like a bonus I did not expect. That was so cool. Mm -hmm. So thanks again for joining us. I'm going to give my voice a rest. <laughs> and I hope all of you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everybody.